Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Mi 11X, the Redmi K40, also known as the Poco F3. Now today we are talking about a very significant and important port. Now this port is from the device that is the Moto Edge and the reason this is significant is because I have been using it since the last two days and the experience has been super amazing. I for the first time felt that there is actually a port or a ROM which is better than Oxygen OS and things might change or the opinion might change when we actually do the gaming review but till the time i do that today's video is the 24 to 48 hours initial impressions and i totally think you should give it a try but before we get into all of that if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified every time i upload a video in the description of each video you will find a link to our telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other so join us there last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so first things first, let's get this right. What do we have here? We have a Moto Edge 20 Pro V2 port, which is based on Android 11, right? and you have all these things and this is done by the amazing guy Pyretex who also ported I think Android 12 Betas to us right so as you can see over here you have disclaimer change log so if you see the change log over here it says vibration fixed added unlimited Google photo storage new power hall Moto camera 3 partially fixed video mode works included V1 change log now this is a early build of V2 that I'm using so I just noticed that you know the volume up button is not working but in the latest build they have gone ahead and fixed the volume up button as well because I know that is really really significant so if you have a look over here right so if you look at the bug section it says some of motor specific features dead like motor specific gestures and stuff might not work but volume up button not working it says read FAQ notes so if you actually go to FAQ notes over here to update from old motor port version, edit script and remove fastboot hsw, install fastboot drivers, invalid sparse file format is not an error, fix safety net, root, for camera use ANX cam, G cam, TR camera or any other cam, uninstall motor cam, it gets installed from play store automatically and it says this is this for the key layout stuff. So for now the volume up is not working but if you follow the install instructions for which I'll be making a detailed video, you should be good to go. Now, why is this port significant? The first thing that I would like to clarify over here is the moment you boot into this particular ROM, the smoothness is just on another level. So what exactly happens is, if you actually go to display, and if you actually go to the menu of refresh rate, you do see that it's set to 144 hertz don't get your hopes high this still is a 120 hertz device and if you actually go to ufo test there you go right so you do have 120 hertz working absolutely fine but this is the smoothest 120 hertz that i've seen on this device on any rom even the animations just have a look at the animation how beautiful they are and how perfectly fine they are working like you open any application it is buttered smooth even the live wallpaper and stuff it's it's very cohesive it works very very smooth and it is an excellent excellent port now apart from this we will talk about the basic things but let's have a look at the moto ui first or whatever they call it the moment you boot into the home screen you have this very very basic android 11-esque wallpaper and uh, you have this very very clean android view wherein you don't really have a lot of bloatware installed you have your quick tiles at the top and you do have a few advanced options over here like live caption all the android 11 features like gif maker and stuff like that so all those things are there and some motor specific features are not working if you click on this option which is moto you get a lot of wallpapers which are really really good so that is that if you press and hold over here you have home settings in which you have some sort of customization not a hell lot of customization and then you have your android 11 widgets and just see how smooth this particular rom is now apart from this you have styles just like any other custom rom you can go ahead and create your own theme with the font 
with the accent color with the squircle icon that i like the grid and name it whatever you want and then you can go ahead and hit apply and you will have your new theme ready so pretty basic android 11 customization and that is neat because to the left you do have google feed and it works smooth as butter you don't really have any problems at all and that is really really neat now let's go to settings over here let's see what we have just like any other custom rom this is a stock based port so do we have any customization for example in network and internet you don't really have any additional options and i've seen now that the wi-fi is connecting and reconnecting more than once so in the long run maybe i will see if that is a bug so you do have your apps and notifications just like android 11 and you have your battery menu as well over here you have battery percentage adaptive battery you have your usage details and optimized charging overcharge protection so all those features are present there you go apart from this you have sound and vibration in which it has some ai stuff and i don't think that is working you have your media controls options and stuff like that like the advanced gestures which you get with motor devices so i'm not really really sure if that is working or not but nonetheless that doesn't stop us from exploring additional features right so if you actually go to the menu you have this option called moto in which you have everything about your device and there is something also called as play which is basically the gaming mode and it works really really well you have your audio effects settings and all the advanced settings in gaming mode say for example if you launch a game say enter to you will have this gaming mode over here which has the brightness it has your blocking of calls notifications you can lock put it to a locked mode and play the game screenshot there you go just took a screenshot dark aware in dark scenes the display will brighten to shoot brighten to show more detail that's good twitch streaming and then you have your game mode settings as well yeah as you can see over here so you do have a dedicated game mode but that is not everything about this particular rom now i do agree that this is a port and there might be some bugs but the smoothness is next level the fast charging works fine the only thing that i might have seen as an issue is that the charging indicator sometimes doesn't show but don't worry the fast charging is still working and you will not have any problems at all as far as the battery backup is concerned it is not extremely great but it is manageable it is not bad bad you can use it as a daily driver and uh, you know as the developer has mentioned in the install notes you can go ahead and install the nx or a camera of your choice so what next we will talk about something really really significant to this particular rom that is the benchmark numbers and i'll tell you why they are significant so the first thing that we will look at is the cpu throttle test right now just have a look at this average performance 227 212 gips no cpu thermal throttling detected and this is a 15 minute test this is really really good right now we move on to geekbench let's see what is the geekbench score over here now remember these tests were done with the game mode enabled 967 single core 2957 multi core very very good score but not the highest and if we talk about n22 over here 707,476. This is the highest amplitude score that I've seen on this device. This is one of the best CPU throttling scores that I've seen on this device. And mind you, the, the device doesn't really heat up a lot. Next up, we will be doing a gaming test. Uh, install video on this particular port is coming soon. But for now, I'm really, really impressed with what they have done with the Moto port and it's working really great. If they continue to improve it, this can be one of the go-to ROMs for daily driver as well as the gaming experience. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.